Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Dental Filling Placement. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. Fillings are the most common and affordable dental restorative procedure for both children and adults. They're used to restore the function and integrity of missing tooth structure, commonly caused by tooth decay. By placing a filling, we reduce the amount of bacteria in a patient's mouth, extend the life of the tooth, and delay the need for additional dental work indefinitely. Our patient today has been experiencing some slight discomfort in their lower left first molar, or, as dental professionals might say, tooth 19. Before we begin, we need to get some x-rays taken of our patient's teeth. X-rays, or radiographs, are essential, low-cost diagnostic tools used to examine a tooth's roots, check the health of the bone surrounding the tooth, observe the status of developing teeth, and find abnormalities such as cavities. Let's get started. First, insert a positioner into the patient's mouth. Next, position the x-ray cylinder where indicated. Great. With the x-ray cylinder in place, we need to get behind our radiation barrier to reduce the amount of radiation we're being exposed to, and take the picture. Don't worry, the lead apron will protect our patient from any unnecessary radiation exposure. I couldn't have done it better myself. I'll have my assistant handle the other x-rays, so let's move on. With all of the x-rays completed, it's time to look for potential issues. When examining dental x-rays for cavities, look for hints of changes in the density of a tooth enamel, or dentin. These locations will appear as darkened areas on an x-ray. This is because the decayed portion of the tooth is less intact, and the x-rays can penetrate that portion of the tooth. Do you think our patient has a cavity? I agree. Can you identify it on the x-ray? There it is. We need to get that taken care of as soon as possible. Let's get started. Now that you've identified the cavity, we need to apply a topical numbing gel to the anesthetic injection site to help reduce any discomfort the needle may cause. Next, we can administer the local anesthetic. The patient will, at most, feel a slight pinch. Afterward, the area will become numb for hours, even though the procedure will only last a few minutes. Take the syringe and inject the local anesthetic into the patient's gums, just below the tooth we'll be working on. And now we'll give our patient a few minutes to become completely numb. Now that our patient's mouth is numb, we can move on to removing the decay. To begin, we'll need to isolate the tooth using a cotton roll. This will give us some space to work. Looks good to me. Dentists typically remove tooth decay with a burr inserted into a handpiece. This is what most people refer to as the drill. Prepare the area by using the burr to carefully remove all of the decay from our patient's tooth. Now that the decay has been removed, we need to figure out which type of filling our patient wants, amalgam or composite. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Amalgam fillings are more durable than composite, but they don't have a tooth-colored appearance like composite fillings. They also often require a larger portion of the tooth to be prepared in order to retain the filling. Composite fillings are much more aesthetically pleasing and require less drilling than amalgam, but they can be a bit more expensive. Sounds good to me. For a composite filling, we need to apply a self-etching dental adhesive to the prepared area of the tooth. This creates a rough surface that helps the filling bond to the tooth. Now dry the area using the air syringe. Next you'll need to apply the self-etching dental adhesive 
to the prepared area of the tooth one more time. Use the curing light to harden the self-etching adhesive. Nice job. Let's get a filling in there. Take the composite filling syringe and place it into the prepared portion of the tooth. Pack the composite into the prepared area of the tooth using a condenser. Next, you'll need to smooth the filling using an instrument called a burnisher. Great! Place the curing light over the tooth and activate it to harden the material. Polish the filling using the polishing instrument. At this point, the dentist checks the patient's bite to ensure that everything was normal and the patient doesn't experience any discomfort. Fortunately for our patient, you did an amazing job, and there doesn't appear to be any issues with the filling or our patient's bite. All done. It looks perfect. After the procedure, our patient may experience some sensitivity, but it should subside within one to two weeks. If it doesn't, they'll need to contact their local dentist office. There is also the possibility that the patient's bite may feel a little off, since being numb can alter their ability to bite normally. Once the patient regains feeling in their mouth, it is advised that they return for an adjustment if it feels like their bite is not normal. In effort to prevent future cavities, our patient will not only need to regularly floss and brush their teeth, but they'll need to ensure that they return to the dentist to have their teeth cleaned at least once every six months. It is also recommended that smoking is avoided since it significantly contributes to the development of tooth decay. And that's a dental filling. You've done a wonderful job. You may want to go back and try out the other type of filling, or why not try your skills in another surgery?